When the warrior king Hammond conquered the ancient land of Cybernia, his coming roused the antagonism of powerful forces, most of which were more or less human, but also of one who was not. Sanctuary. The assault on the walls is beaten back. A weary king summons his court magician, the wise Abarak. You look ill, your highness. Allow me to prepare a potion for you. No, I am only tired. So very tired. Take over for me. He stumbles to his chamber on leaden feet his sword dropping from nerveless fingers, and barely reaches his bed, falling across it asleep at once. What disturbs his sleep he does not know, but he suddenly starts up, his heart beating wildly. What? Who? And then he sees a familiar dreaded figure. No. It cannot be. The thing approaches. Hammond listens, sick with horror, as it begins to speak. Yes, it is I. You did not believe the ancient law, but now you shall. You conquered but could not rule Cybernia. Then one day you learned of the existence of Dragon Inn and the tomb of the druid king from a captured rebel. And we cannot serve anyone who does not wear the crown of ancient kings. Very well. I shall go to the tomb and get the crown. How will I find this place? I will tell you where it is, your majesty, if you will spare my life. Done. The wretch that gave you the location of the tomb, but Abarak had misgivings. I have heard legends of this dragon hinge, and also of a curse. Nevertheless, I am going. Now take this villain and execute him. <laughs> the next day he found you at the entrance. You must go on alone, sire. I dare not go farther. Then farewell, good Abarak. I shall return wearing the crown, or I shall not return at all. Fighting a growing sense of panic, you descended endless flights of stairs, coming at last to a massive metal rod door, which swung open effortlessly, admitting you to the subterranean city. The feeling of being watched began and grew as you proceeded. And then you entered our tomb, the sacred resting place of generations of druid kings which no man had ever seen and lived. There it is, the crown! As you took the crown, you observed something which has haunted your dreams ever since. His eyes... They are opening! Then on your way back to your castle, you looked back. Just once. Your eyes were not playing tricks, mortal. I followed you here and will continue to follow you to your death. I cannot return to my eternal rest until the violation of my tomb has been avenged. Prepare to die, for your time has come. No, help me! Help! Oh, oh. it is you, Abara. And it was only a dream. A terrible dream. Yes, you screamed, sire. Tell me about it. Briefly, Hammond tells his wizard of the dream. But I know the dead cannot harm the living. And so I am determined to complete my tower. Working day and night, his vassals build the king a mighty fortress. 
Now I will see what I can do, sire. What man can do, magic can improve. And Abarak works a spell upon the walls. The stones and mortar are joined. This tower will stand forever. For a time, Hammond feels secure behind his strong walls. But then, one night... No! It cannot be! I must be going mad! Demon warriors mounted on monstrous birds launch an aerial assault on the tower. No! It cannot be! Ah! Then Hammond wakens. Another dream! But so very real, so vivid! It is an omen, a warning. I must put a roof on my tower. Soon the roof is done. A metal roof. Our king is clever. I are frightened. Oh, boo. Again the wizard does his work. Now you are certainly safe, my lord. No being, natural or supernatural, can pass that mystic symbol. But the very next night, I heard a sound. What? We forgot to protect it from below! A score of hideous, inhuman shapes burst from the hard-packed earth and attacked the hapless king. No! Oh, help! Save me, Abarak! He flees up the stairs until at last there is nowhere to run. Something seizes him, and then he realizes. Oh no, again! I was dreaming again, but this time I very nearly leaped to my death. I cannot even trust myself. What am I to do? We must seal the tower off completely from the rest of the castle. I will design one secret door. Yes, yes, I must be safe. Fill in all the doors and windows. And soon the work is underway. Abarak has the workmen install one door, which can only be opened from within. And the ground beneath is paved and protected against entry by magic. The last stone is in place, Lord. It is all done. Yes, except for one thing. You men know the secret of the door. I'm sorry, but your existence endangers me. Therefore, you must die. <laughs> Safe at last. No power on earth can harm me now, neither man nor demon. Aye, your highness. I can sleep again, sure that no one can enter, for only you and I... Yes, your majesty? Only one other person on earth even knows where the doorway is, Abrak. If he were to die... Quick as thought, the king's blade flashes out at the aged wizard, but... Abarak! You still stand! What manner of being are you? Or is your magic greater than I knew? Neither your sword nor your tower can save you now, foolish man. For I am not Abarak. The real Abarak is long since dead. He never returned from Dragon Hill. But then, who? What? what? Have, Have you not, not guessed? guessed? I caused the dreams which made you build this tower. This tower which is now your prison and your tomb. For when you try the door, you will find it will not open for you. As he realizes the trap he had built for himself, Hammond begins to scream.
his royal vassals try to force the tower. In vain. At length, unable to stand the sound of his mad terror, they open the gates and flee into the night. Until the castle stands empty and deserted, save for one man in a stone tower who screams for a very long time. <coughs> The end.